Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be playing around with large collage images and using stenciling to combine it all together. So I'm starting off in a um, square journal, which I don't use very often, but I'm really enjoying it and I'm just gessoing the, the entire page because I knew I wanted to do lots of different colours on this. Um, this particular square journal's got like ledger paper and grid paper and stuff in it, so I just wanted to have a sort of neutralish background. Then I'm going crazy with my gel medium over the top because I had quite a large um, collage tissue I wanted to glue down on my page. So this one is from Natalie May and it's called Jessica I think. You can see all the beautiful stamping and collage and so on in the background. Um, but it didn't go across the entire page so I wanted to m extend this image I suppose so it blended together that you didn't see that harsh cut edge on the side. So once I dried it off, you can see I put a little bit of um, gesso on the edge just to sort of blend it together. And then I really wanted my, the face to be the focal image on this page. So I'm starting off with um, a big strip of yellow, sort of so it looks like it's coming towards her face and then away from it. And I've broken out my Tim Holtz stencils for a change because they were sitting next to me <laughs> and I could grab them. And I'm using a lot of graphic um, stenciling um, on this page. So lots of dots and sort of general um, geometric shapes. Sorry, it's not a graphic geometric shapes is what I was thinking of before, sorry. Once I've finished doing the stenciling, then I'm going back over with some of my um, stencils again. This is a sort of fade out stencil and using my dirty wet wipe to add some colour to the bottom of the page as well. So I started off while I had the really bright at the top or in the middle then I've started to get a little bit darker around the edges and you can see I'm quite rough and ready with my paint strokes but already on that side you can notice it that um, you can't notice where the tissue paper ends which is you know what I was looking for. To blend it sort of all together a little bit, I'm going in with this lace floral in white. Um, and again, I'm taking the stenciling up and over the image that I want. So obviously the face is a focal image. You'll notice I did some of those dots in yellow onto her face. I've put some of those flowers along onto her neck. So make sure that you're using the stenciling to come on. You don't just stop at a... Um, at one spot that you sort of stencil over. If you do stencil too far you can just do what I did and wipe it away with a, your finger or a wet wipe. Because you've sealed the image with your gel medium you can sort of wipe way over the top you're not going to ruin your image. Now I've got it quite dark I wanted to go in with some um, brighter colours once I sort of finished off the edge. I'm going in with the square pattern and extending up some of that blue into the yellow so you've got that repeating pattern happening. Don't be afraid to stencil over areas you've already stenciled that helps blend it all together as well and again you can sort of see that stenciling going into the area that I'm um, trying to blend into my piece. Same with the stamping I'm sort of stamping over it so it's all part of the um, page and blending it all together. The original image had um, quite a lot of text around the outside of it which I'm wanting to replicate and I'm using a mixture of white and black ink to do that. Now the white ink I'm using is a pigment ink so you do have to heat set that. I'm still a little bit impatient with it so I find it does smudge a little bit on me. Um, if you just, you know, actually let it dry it's fine. To bring some brightness back into the page, I'm hitting this with some neon paints. Now, neon paints are a fabulous, fabulous um, addition to your kit because it just brings all that brightness in. And particularly if you've st stenciled white in the background, it just grabs onto that and really boosts the pattern. So you can really see that floral pattern sort of coming up through. Um, where it was previously and you've got this gorgeous sort of framed image and this face coming out of it. That works because the neon paints are a little bit translucent 
so it just acts more like a filter and boosts the color to add a little bit more neon to this page i have these magic neon ink pads i think i got them from natalie may and i was actually really surprised because they really are quite neon so they work well i think they are dye based so i do tend to leave them to the last coat um, <clears throat> but they stand up to most everything I, I throw at them which is really nice now i'm just going in with a little bit of stabilo oil pencil in a few different colors just to boost um, the color of her lips and the eyes and so on so i want it to be really really delicate because i want her to be sort of coming out of this i don't know colored mist so to speak and um, i still want her to be the focal point on the page so when I finish that, I'm just fiddling around, as you do, going back over my spill oil pencil just to pop out some of those colours, make sure the pupil's quite dark, make sure she's got nice mascara on, just strengthen up that jawline, and then I'm just putting a little bit of a shadow around her by um, dampening that stabilo oil pencil to help push it out from the, for the background. Once it's all dry, then we're going to go in and put in our quote on the opposite page. So you've sort of got this lady staring at us and then you've got the quote to go with it once I've finished up using up all my paint that I've uh, left out on my page. So quite often, if I'm painting and I've got too much paint out, this is what will happen. I will um, just paint it into another page and it's one less thing. Um, I don't need to worry about a blank page in the future. It's got colour on it and as ready to go. So I'm just writing out my quote with my Stabilo or pencil. I don't usually do this but because I wanted this to be in sort of cursive writing um, I'm not quite as confident with that as I am just normal printing that I do so I like to have a little bit of um, a guide just to make sure I've got it in the right place. Once I've done I'm just going back over my paint pen just to make sure it's permanent. So um, I do like having the darker writing from the paint pen. Um, so I've got, I know nothing will, with any certainty, but the sight of stars makes me dream, which I really loved. I don't know where I found that quote, but it just really appealed to me. I did start going in with my white stabilo oil pencil to put some um, highlights on my letters, but my pencil wasn't sharp enough. So um, I just went, fell back on Old Faithful and got my paint pen out. You can sort of see me having to prime it because this one's getting down to the end of what's in the barrel. Um, and quite often, I think it's actually the only time I ever use the envelope is to prime my pens or put little puddles of ink out that I can dip my pen into. So let me know in the comments if you've ever used your, the envelope at the front of your Dilutions journals for anything other than priming your pens. Um, once I've finished this, it's a good opportunity to have a bit of a look at the entire page and see, is it balanced? Is it what I wanted? Is there anything I want to add to it? So I was thinking that the bottom right hand side is a little bit stark. Um, and did I need to put anything in that? And that's often the case when you sort of get to this end of the journal, you know, is it finished, is it not finished? Where, when does something become finished? So sometimes I, if I can't make up my mind, I will walk away and leave it and then maybe come back the next day and finish it off. In most cases, once it's, once it's done, it's done. What I did end up doing though was getting some white ink and spritzing it across my iPad, myself, my pens in front of me and some of it went on my journal. <laughs> so I'm uh, not very talented when it comes to making splots across my page. I also decided to put a little bit of black in too just to sort of add to that depth of colour and then I actually unfortunately touched my fan brush to it but you know these things happen. Make sure it's dried off when you're finished and then you are complete see me getting my new pen because that one was really bugging me because it was dead and um does it actually work yay no yes it does <laughs> it's 
amazing what happens when you have the right tools at the right time. So you can see just having that extra little bit of white on there just really pops everything out from the background. So if you don't pop a drop shadow on your letters, have a go try and doing it. It doesn't have to be white or black, um, any colour will work. Um, but it really does finish off your writing on a page and it really sort of helps tie it all together. So I hope you have a go at combining stenciling to combine an image into the background, particularly collage papers. It's a really fun technique to do. If you've got neons, break those out and have a go with them too. Um, and just above all, have fun. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye for now.